Hello the internet, my name is Dean and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails tutorial. Today we're going to cover setting up favorites. This will let users favorite and unfavorite a post, as well as let us show users a list of past posts that they favorited and the times that those posts were favorited at by those users. That was a mouthful. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to add two gems in here. We're adding the first one because we need to use the device user account so that we can actually you know, have users. And the second one we're going to use is the jQuery dash rails because later we're going to do some stuff to make sure that we don't have to refresh the page whenever we favor the post. So we'll come back into our terminal, run a bundle install command. Once that's done, we can run the rails g device colon install command. And I might need to edit this one out because this command has been giving me a headache all day long. Wow, that was slow. Okay, now we can run the rails g devise user command to generate our user model. Now I'll do rails g scaffold post and we'll give each post a title of type string by default and a body of type text. Once that's done, we can come over to app, assets, style sheets, and delete the scaffolds.scss file. Now we can come into config and our routes.rb file and say root two and posts index. Once all of that's done, we'll do a rails db colon migrate to migrate the database, and then we can do a rails s command to start the server. Now that we've started the server, we can come in and create a new post. We'll just call this first one hello world, and then we'll grab some hipsum so that we can, uh, you know, spice things up a bit. And we'll highlight from the bottom because this website is all wonky lately. And we'll create the post. Now we'll add in the favorite link below the title, but above the body. So we'll come into views, posts, and the show page. And we'll just add in some Ruby code that says link to favorite. And we'll just stub this out for now because we don't actually have a path for this. Now that that's done, we can refresh the page and we should see the favorite link. And that's not really going anywhere. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll kill the server and now we'll run a rails g model command to generate a favorite model. We'll give the favorite model a reference to the post by saying post colon references and a reference to the user by saying user colon references, assuming I remember how to use my fingers. Once that's done, we can do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database again. And once that's done, we can do a rails g controller favorites and just give it an update action. Just as a bit of a note, whenever you do some sort of like join table or a many to many association like this, you generally don't want to just name things like favorites. You probably want to name it like favorite posts or user favorites or user posts or post users. It's entirely up to you. Generally, you do it in like lexicographical order. But for this, we're just going to call it favorites and try and keep things simple. That way, those that aren't totally familiar with things, they can, you know, kind of intuitively work out what we're actually doing. So now we have the controller set up and we have the model set up. We've migrated the database. So hopefully if I type Rails S, everything will work. And we're good to go. So now what we need to do is come into our controller and our favorites controller. And inside of the update action, we need to do a couple things. The first is we need to grab a reference to the favorite and we need to check if the favorite exists. So the way to do this is by saying favorite dot where uh, post is equal to the post.find of the params and the colon post. So here we're grabbing the post params, which we're going to pass in. And we're calling post.find to find the ID that's passed in by this post params. So basically for this first one, because it's just an ID of one, all, are, all we're really doing is this variable will resolve to a one. We're grabbing the first post, which is basically the first, the same thing as saying post.first. And then we're just assigning that to be our first post. So once we have that, we then need a reference to the user, which for this we can just say user colon current underscore user. And now that we have the current user in here, we do need to actually make sure that the user is signed in whenever we do this. We're going to skip that for now, though, and we're just going to check if this is equal to an empty array. And the reason for this is quite simple. Whenever you do a dot where query, you're going to either get back an array of the records that you were searching for, or you're just going to get an empty array, which looks like this. So the way to check if the favorite exists is, well, first with an if statement. And then inside of here, we're going to grab our favorite variable. And then we're going to say, does this favorite variable equal the empty array? If it doesn't, we'll do this other block of code. 
But for now, we'll just say if this equals the empty array, then the favorite does not exist. So for this, we need to say create the favorite. We'll come down to the else statement. And for this one, we need to delete the favorite. And if for some reason this favorite has more than one, we'll just want to destroy all of them. So we'll just do this. I don't really see that happening, but you never know. So let's start by creating the favorite. We'll say favorite.create. We'll say post is equal to the post.find with the params of the post. And the user is the current user. Once that's done, we can come into the else statement and say favorite, well, I guess favorite, lowercase f, dot destroy all. Now we can do a respond to do format end and we'll say a uh, format.html and we'll just pass in some empty stuff and then we'll say format.js and we'll pass in some more empty stuff. Now ideally we would like to be able to check if the favorite exists from other areas so in order to accomplish this we'll just do a quick variable assignment inside of the if statement. So we'll say if the uh, favorite doesn't exist, we'll create the favorite and then the favorite will exist. So we'll say at favorite underscore exists equals true. So the favorite has been created. So this variable that we're creating right here is now assigned to true. And inside of the else statement, we'll say at favorite underscore exists is equal to false because we just destroyed it. And because one of these two will always run, we'll always have this variable assigned to either true or false. Once that's done, we can come into the show page. And for our link here, we can change this to be the favorites underscore update underscore path. We can now come back to our post and refresh and see what it's giving us. So for this, it's telling us localhost colon 3000 slash favorites slash update. If we click that, it tells us couldn't find post without an ID. And the reason for this is if we type in params into the console, we don't actually have a post params. So how do we do that? Well, quick solution for that is to just say post is equal to add post. We'll refresh and we'll see what this is, uh, what the URL is now. So now it's saying slash favorites slash update question mark post equals one, which is giving us our actual uh, post. Now, we don't want to redirect to that page, so we want to come to our favorites folder. And instead of having this be an update.html.erb, we're going to rename this to be update.js.erb. We'll get rid of this HTML here. And we need to come back into our show page real quick and give this link an ID. So for this, we'll say ID colon uh, favorites underscore link. We'll copy that and then we'll come into the update.js.erb and we'll grab that by the ID, which is why we have the hash inside the quotes. And then we'll say dot text. And at this point, I'm going to change this to be the JavaScript syntax highlighting. So now inside of this, we would like to be able to figure out if the uh, favorite exists. So we're going to come into our application controller and we're going to create a helper method. So we'll call this uh, favorite underscore text and end. And then inside of the favorite text, we want to say if the at favorite underscore exists is equal to true. So if the favorite currently exists, then we want this link to say unfavorite because we want to remove the favorite if it exists. Now, what we could do is write the if statement, write an else and then write an end, but you can also do this with a ternary operator and that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to say return at favorite exists. So remember, this is a Boolean. So if the favorite exists, this condition right here will be true. If it doesn't exist, then this condition will be false. So then we do the question mark. After the question mark, this is the case where it's true. So if the favorite exists, then we want to return unfavorite. Else, the favorite does not exist, and then the text that it returns should be favorite. So now we can come into the update.js.erb and inside of the string we can just throw in a little bit of Ruby code and we can call a favorite text but this won't work because we haven't actually defined this as a helper method yet so the way to do that is just say helper underscore method and then colon favorite text once that's done we can call the favorite text from inside of the update.js.erb file but we also need to come into our show page and instead of just leaving this as link to favorite because that's just going to statically force this to always say favorite. 
we need to also call the favorite text method from in here. Once we've called the favorite text method from in here, we need to then come into our post controller and our show page and say, anytime that we go to the show page, we need to say at favorite underscore exists. And we need to check if the favorite exists. So at favorite underscore exists is equal to favorite dot where. And don't forget, because we're inside of this um, show page, we do have access to the at post variable. And then we'll say user is equal to current underscore user. So if this exists and it's equal to the empty, then we know that the favorite does not exist. So if the favorite does not exist, then this favorite exists should be false, right? Else this should be true. If the favorite does not exist, then the favorite does not exist, else it does exist. Sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> So now let's come over to this page and refresh and see how things are looking. So we have the favorite link with a post parameter being passed to it. We're not currently signed in. So let's make sure that we have a before underscore action that says authenticate underscore user accept, and we'll just exclude the index page for now. So this is a bit of a lazy way to do it. Ideally, you would have a check inside of your show page to see if the current user exists. Otherwise, do this. But this will force us to have to sign in, which saves me from having to type one link, type password, and we're good to go. So now we'll click this favorite link and see what happens. So we have a favorite being created here. And then the favorites controller update action is missing a template for this request format and variant. It's attempting to access a text slash HTML file, but all we have, if you'll remember, is this update.js.erb. So the way to fix this is to come into this link all the way at the end, we'll add something else and we'll say method is, or not method, uh, remote colon is true. We'll refresh the page and we'll come to the root page. We'll show this one and we'll hit favorite and we'll see what happens. So the favorite ran, it created the favorite. It's deleting the favorite, but this text isn't updating. And if we come into our console, maybe we can see that the question, oh, okay. So we didn't add the, uh, jQuery to the application.js. That's an easy enough fix. So we'll come in here, we'll say require jQuery underscore UJS. And we'll save that, we'll refresh. And our unfavorite text is now displaying because the last action we did was we created a favorite. So we'll hit unfavorite, it deletes the favorite, the favorite link has changed again. And we can do this all day long and every time this will properly be uh, changed without the page having to reload. So the last thing that we can do here is we can close some of these windows and we can come into our posts index page. And I guess we could probably just do this above the actual posts. So above this entire thing, we'll do a uh, h1 tag. Oops, h1, h1. We'll say users or your favorite posts, maybe your favorite posts. And we'll just throw them in here. So for this, all we have to do is grab the current user, current underscore user dot favorites dot each do favorite. And then we can close this at the end of it. And then for each of these, all we'll do is we'll just say, um, I guess we can do the uh, you favorited this post. And then we'll just add in a link right here and we'll say link to favorite.post.title and favorite.post. And we'll save that. Undefined method, so current underscore user dot favorites doesn't have a reference to the favorites. So we need to come into our user.rb and we need to say that the user has many favorites and we need to refresh this page. So now we can see that we have favorited this post, hello world. If we click on that, we go to the 
fill the world page. We can go back. Let's create a second post, a second post, more words here. We can favorite this one. We can go back to the all post page and let's actually throw in a break statement right here so that every time this runs, we'll do a BR. And there you go. So now we can also do something like this. So we have the favorite post title text and instead of just saying you favorited this post, we can add in some brackets right here and inside of that, we'll say favorite.created at.strf time. And then we'll search for strftime.net. And we'll grab the 12 hours. We'll say 12 hours colon minutes. And we'll grab AM PM like that. Let's maybe put a space in here. So we'll grab this and we'll paste it inside of this strf. And we'll come back to our page and refresh. So now we're saying at uh, 5.30 a.m. Of course, you need to change the time zone if you're doing this to whatever you're using. But at, at this time, you favorited this post. And that just about does it for this video. It was a bit of a impromptu video that I just decided to record. So that's why some of the things kind of went out of order. But um, I hope this helps someone. You know, if it did, remember to like this video. If it didn't, remember to dislike it so other people know not to watch it. But uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.